Hello children, hope you all are in the pink of your health. So, for today I will quickly make you revise the topic, the sentence, its parts and kinds. What is a sentence made of? It is made of words. And why do we use words? We use words to express our ideas and thoughts and we usually use them in groups. Let us observe some sentences. Reading is my favorite pastime. Is it making complete sense? Yes. Pastime is reading favorite my. Is it making any sense? No. So group of words that makes no sense are known as jumbled words. And the group of words which makes complete sense are known as or is known as a sentence. Right? So, you should remember that a sentence is a group of words which makes complete sense and that every sentence must begin with a capital letter and end with a punctuation mark. It should end with a punctuation mark and this will be applicable according to, the, um, it, according to its kinds. Alright? Okay. And of course, group of words which makes some sense but not complete sense are known as phrases. For example, in the east, to the left, indicating direction, right? A long leaf indicating the time span. And that every sentence must have a subject and a predicate. And these are the two parts of a sentence. So sentence, this universal structure of the sentence is what? Subject plus predicate. So what is the subject? Subject is that part of a sentence or that word of a sentence which names the person or thing we are speaking about or what are we talking about and predicate is that word or part of a sentence which says something about the subject all right like for example if i say the small boy carried a big box now over here how to identify a subject and a predicate to identify a subject, you should ask the question who or what the sentence is about. So what is this sentence about? Or what is it talking about? Is it, it is talking about the small boy. So the small boy is the subject. And to identify the predicate, we should ask the question that what is it? What is the sentence talking about the subject? So what is the sentence talking about the subject, the small boy? That he carried a big box. So carried a big box is the predicate. And yes, you should also remember the structure of the predicate that we have discussed before. That it, the predicate, it consists of a verb and object, right? And what is the object? The object receives the action performed by the subject. So, if we again look at the predicate, carried a big box. Over here, verb carried is the verb and a big box is the object which receives the action performed by the subject, the small boy. Alright, so of course, till here, you should remember every sentence must have a subject and a predicate. Usually the subject of the sentence comes first, but it may be that in some sentences, it may come after the predicate. For example, here comes the bus. So what is the sentence talking about? About the bus. So the bus is the subject. And... In imperative sentences, the subject is left out. It is understood that the subject will be you. Now, moving towards the kinds of sentences. As we know, there are four kinds of sentences. So, the very first one is assertive sentences. So, these sentences actually make statements. They declare facts. Right? And it consists of Two more sentences in it that is affirmative the positive one and negative sentences which convey the negative meaning in a sentence assertive sentences always end with a full stop and the structure of the affirmative sentences you can say like for example the poor beggar sat on the floor so it is the same for the affirmative as well uh, the structure will be subject plus predicate so over here the poor beggar subject sat on the floor predicate now, for a negative sentence, we follow the structure subject plus helping verb 
plus not plus main verb plus object. So she is not reading a book. Over here, this is a negative sentence that states that you know uh, or conveys a negative meaning. So she is not reading a book. If we again uh, see the structure, subject is she over here. Helping verb is not followed by the main verb reading and then the object a book. All right. So remember that assertive sentences consist of uh, affirmative as well as negative sentences. Next, we move to the second type of sentences that is uh, interrogative sentence. Inter interrogative sentences, they actually ask questions and they always end with a question mark. And if you remember, I've told you that there are yes or no question forms as well as WH interrogative forms as well as interrogative negative. So first, let's see the example of the yes or no question form. So the structure of yes or no question form is helping verb plus subject plus main verb plus object. So of course, helping verb have followed by the subject you then followed by the main verb solved and then the object the problem and then of course at the end you should remember to put a question mark then the question uh, form i mean the wh interrogative question form so the structure will be wh question word as you can see it on the screen with the second example what are you doing so wh question word that is what followed by the helping verb are then followed by the subject you and at the end doing doing is the main verb one more example of interrogative negative, I'll discuss it over here. So, is he not coming? So, is is what over here? Helping verb followed by the subject he, then not. To make it interrogative negative, not is inserted or it is put between the subject and the main verb. So, the main verb over here is coming. Is he not coming? And if we have to shorten it, if we have to use a short form of is not, so then it will be isn't. So then it, the not word is actually added to the auxiliary verb is itself. Then it will become isn't he coming. The third kind of a sentence is imperative sentence. And these sentences express commands, suggestions, advice or make requests. They always end with a full stop. The example of imperative sentence Imperative positive, I will say, is shut the door. So it is a command. Please open the window. You are making a request to open the window. Do not close the door. Now, this is imperative negative. So to form imperative negative, we actually add do not before the verb. As you can see it in the example, do not close the door. So before the main verb close, do not is added. So to make neg negative imperative. Then we have exclamatory sentences which express sudden and strong feelings. Feelings of joy, sorrow, surprise, anger, delight, etc. So these are known as exclamatory sentences and they always end with an exclamation mark. And of course, I hope you remember the structure of the what exclamatory sentences and how exclamatory sentences. If not, uh, I'll tell you again. To form what exclamatory sentences, the structure is what followed by the article a or an, then adjective, the noun and then the exclamatory mark. So you can see it over here, what, then a beautiful girl she is. What a beautiful girl she is. So it is expressing the uh, delight or you can say it, uh, appreciation, it is appreciating that of course the girl is beautiful. All right. So what followed by the article a, then the adjective beautiful followed by the noun and then the she is over here. That will be the uh, she subject and followed by the auxiliary verb and then the exclamatory mark. Similarly, how clever the crow is. So how adjectives are formed by how then followed by the adjective clever. Then, of course, the noun and at the end, the exclamatory, uh, sorry, the auxiliary verb. All right. And at the end, exclamatory sentences. Always remember, if you miss out any of the punctuation mark, then, of course, 
that sentence will be grammatically wrong. So be careful with the use of punctuations in the kinds of sentences. All right. Okay. So children, uh, I would now conclude today's session and would remind you to go through the video once again, learn the structures properly and revise the topic thoroughly. All right, children. Thank you. Bye-bye.